Welcome everyone to the live stream. We're here in the live stream. Gonna go to the channel, get the link, and uh, come back and start reviewing some. What's this link? Yeah, there we go. Okay. We are live. Live stream is live. We will be we will be reviewing the following. I not we I it's the royal we. Okay. Let's get rid of that and come back to here. Quick market update. Uh, things are going down. It looks like uh, getting a buy signal to fire it off on the six hour. Um, and had uh, some sell signals going off yesterday, which I went into and now starting to feel a little bit of pain, but still have a buy, or sorry, a short from yesterday. Shorted at about 7,600. Uh, I posted that in the channel. Uh, let me just go to here, and then that way I can we can just drag the let's move that. Let just take the chat out. Pop the chat out. There we go. And let's move the chat into the other page right here. Cool. All right. Uh, so I am thinking that we are in for quite a downward ride. So let me add in a new indicator called volume profile. Oh, thank you. Uh, we're going to put in fixed range. Oh, sorry, not fixed range. It's going to be visible range. Uh, all right. And we want to change here. Two twenty-four, just more. All right, and we're gonna go to two-day chart. Go away. So this goes all the way back to fifteen hundred. Let's go a little bit, a little bit lower. So here's all the volume for the past while. And I want you to take a look on the right side. This is the important part over here. Uh, we can see that the majority of all the volume previously uh, was at around 2,750, 4,300, and 8,200. Now we've been in that 8,200 range and we've gone to the downside. So now the most likely place for us to find volume would be in between this space right here is a major one. That's at the 5,000 level. We're not so far away from there. We're only $1,400. And then if it gets any worse, it would be down here around the 3,000 level. That would be interesting to say the least. But this 5,000 level would kind of coincide with this long-term trend line. So if we came down to 5,000 and then just sat on this trend line for a while, maybe even went down to 4,000 and then bounced back up, uh, we, we need to fill out these volume channels like we have up here before we can actually move back up to the upside. Um, if we'd broken through this channel, then there would have been a lot of upside here. We probably would have been in that 12,000 area. Mm, but probably first we need to fill out this 5,000 area. And I think we'll probably get there sometime in the beginning of July. You can just assume that we're going to follow this downwards. First two weeks of July, which is about a month from now. So we're looking at like another month of, of downward prices. And also let's put this on a, uh, a log scale just so it's easier to see. Yeah, so... Uh, well, that kind of screws up the chart, though. 
But here's that space right here. Let's go to not lock scale. There we go. Okay, that's a little bit better. Yeah, so let's come back to the sheet. Mm. The winners so far have been Radix, Seller Network, and NOS and Algorand, and RSK, and Adar. I'm advising Adar, so be aware of that. Right, oh, okay. Let's take a look at Sovereign first. Um, I have invested into Sovereign. I will be upfront about that already. I got offered through a private sale and I put a good amount of money into it because I like it. It's a cool idea. Sovereign identity. So let's take a look. Also, we're going to keep track of the markets as well, too. Just looking. 3% update. Um, small moves. I'm waiting for a break to the downside here. This um, 6,600 area. I need to fill out a bit more. Uh, but there's a lot of volume previously that went to that 7,000 area. So I think we're done there. Yeah, you can see here. I mean, maximum that would probably push up to would be about 6,800. And that's really my stop for this downward move. Um, if we break through, break through like 69.50, that's really the top. But we'd be back on a bullish trend then. And all my stops would be pushed through. But the thing that I'm looking at most is the weekly and let me just zoom this out a bit on the weekly get rid of these fib numbers on the weekly you can see that we had a firing of the um of the sell signal right back here when we were at eight thousand four hundred and i will be staying in there that short until we get a a buy signal a little bit later down and this is wt cross lb All right so let's come back and take a look at sovereign a protocol and token for self-sovereign identity and decentralized trust I wonder if this is close to what Pure Mountain is doing. The problem. Um, right. Physical credentials, inner wallet. Okay. Standardized format. World Wide Web Consortium is finally standardizing digital credentials. <laughs> World Wide Standard, okay. Issuing protocol, verifying protocol, existing trust relationship. All right. Standardizing how vet to verify the digital signatures of credential issuers. PKI, green padlock. No problem. Cumbersome, costly, and centralized. It does cost a lot of money to get that little lock up top. SSL. A public blockchain is a decentralized root of trust that nobody owns. Uh, trust mathematics. Da, da, da. Every address, every public key cannot have its own address. Did decentralized identifier. DIDs provide a standard way for individuals and organizations to create permanent, globally unique, cryptographically verifiable identifiers entirely under their identity owner's control. Unlike a domain name, IP address, or phone number, a, a DID is not rented from any service provider and no one can take it away from whomever owns or controls the associated private key. Is there an open standard? 
Okay, then great. So how does that tie it in? Mm. Did we issue and sign verifiable claims and other documents? Right, so this is a lot like Pure Mountain, actually. Let me actually write Jed from Pure Mountain now and see if he has any views on this. Uh, hi, Jed. The name name service identity for all public blockchain. All right, uh, gold currency. So, first global public utility exclusively for self sovereign identity. Ah, uh, Everum, you're right. Everum sovereign. That's good. This is Hyperledger. So is it, a, is it a Hyperledger blockchain? Because I, I don't think that's public. Yeah, hybrid, hybrid public permission. Hybrid public, public permission blockchains like Sovereign. Uh, Sovereign Trust Framework. Okay. Uh, sovereign tra Trust Framework Working Group, composed of volunteer exper experts in digital identity privacy and policy from around the world, worked for eight months to develop the first trust framework that would provide the legal and policy foundation for a glob go global public utility for SSI. Ratified by the Sovereign Foundation Board of Trustees, the first version of the Sovereign Trust Framework establishes 13 core principles of SSI and defines the first generation of business legal and technical policies for implementing them. I mean, that's good. Uh -huh. The network must have performance and scalability of DNS. Mm -hmm. Okay, simpler to scale, consensus protocol. Validator node to accept write transactions and a much larger ring of observer nodes running read-only copies of the blockchain to process read requests. So is it a dual public private blockchain? Mm -hmm. In addition, engineered to be able to turn a state proof with any response. Right, nice. Uh, has no legal identity. Meet the identity needs of everyone. Cost should not be a barrier to access. That's great. Okay. Above all, a global public utility for SSI must meet the highest privacy standards in the world, including GDPR. Uh, implements privacy by design. Pseudonymity by default. Private agents by default. Select closure. Disclosure by default. All right. Okay. Pseudo anonymous. Hmm. Interesting. Um, distributed private agents working in parallel with the distributed ledger. Interesting. I like how the GD GDPR compliant uh, very, very cool. Zero ZK snarks. Zero knowledge proofs. The impact, right? Okay, yeah, it'll have a huge impact if they can grow it. Um, I like how they're presenting themselves as 
a like a, a group a working group as if this is not just the result of one company but the result of many enterprises across the world the greater the risk the greater the value of verifiable claims so paying for verifiable credential right so it's very much like built-in incentive for the privacy preserving value of exchange digital transfer take place directly in line with the exchange of verifiable complaints mm-hmm Nice. Zero knowledge payment system. Nice. Digital credential insurance. All right. All right, very cool. I like how they use Alliance. It's supposed to be open source on a non, on a hybrid permission blockchain. People, let's take a look at people. Executive team. Um, is Miss Heather Dahl? This is Heather Dahl. Roy Avandian. So. Syngitech, data security firm, still working there because she's the co-founder. Board of directors for the National Press Foundation, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Comenta LLC. Okay, it's, it's good for a... Um, Influencer, man. Hello, Olga. Uh, okay, I think it's good for now. Roy Van Dent, Chief Financial Officer, Global Upside Corporation. <laughs> what is that? Global Upside supports international businesses with end-to-end -end accounting, payroll, HR, compliance. It's important in 100 countries. PEO services. Global Upside Corporation. Interesting. <laughs> uh, CFO. I wonder if, how much time he's actually putting in. And then Nathan, Nathan George. Let's take a look at this guy. What's their blockchain guy? Hopefully it's their CTO. Board of Trustees. It is a significant board of trustees. All right, technical governance board. It's good to see. Ah, so he worked at Evernim for a long time. Software architect, right? Me and Nathan both know Adrian Cortez. How about we connect? I think. Smart ICO investor.com. I need to chat about sovereign. Okay. Um, Oh, here we go. Just dropped a percent. It's usually pretty good. A hey. there's the dump. The short short would have been six thousand. See how far it comes down. It needs to probably come to this range. But that's good. Uh, hand. 
Advanced.ai. Okay. Uh, let's continue to go through Sovereign. It looks like they have a very good board and uh, very well-rounded board trustees. Um, I like how they're presenting themselves. Uh, I wonder if Jed got back about no, he hasn't. He hasn't seen it yet. Um, and let's look at a few of these guys. Technical Governance Board, Jason Law, Daniel Hardman, Yan Kaminish. This is a Utah-based company. <laughs> Enterprise Architect, Office of the CIO, a general professor, uh, internet identity. Okay, so that is a lot. Chief Architect at Evernim. Here's a guy. Mm -hmm. Finicity. Finis Finicity. 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 I don't know. Mm -hmm. Daniel Hardman, leader of software teams. Technical ambassador for Hyperledger. Makes sense. Okay. Security researcher. It's very good. Ian Kaminish. IBM. Makes sense. As Let's look through everybody else. Five. Expect that to go down more. Uh, it's hopefully the beginning of a sell off. Digital Bazaar. WC3 and W3C. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Consensus. Recipient. So it's all Utah people. Oh wait, Austria. A lot of Utah people. John Best. Okay. Very experienced team. Digital Bazaar. Particularly Timothy Ruff. All right, okay, let's um, get a uh, web website for this. Sovereign team experience, looks like it has a lot. I'm gonna go 14 on this. Senior management experience, uh, 13. Blockchain experience, looks like they have a lot of um, IBM guys on here. Uh, IBM, Hyperledger, oh, right, we forgot to check out. Do they have, let's join. Samuel at smarterledgers.com, subscribe. No links for contact, let's go on contact. Uh, forms? Do they actually have a form? Uh, that'll be interesting. It's smart instead of, you know, getting, oh wow, look at that. See, people are actually talking on the forum. Interesting. So, quality of the project. What did I give Pure Mountain? This is a little bit better than Pure Mountain. I may have to, re so I gave Pure Mountain a 8. So, this is its own blockchain designed specifically for this and which makes it quite high actually I'm going to give it a 13 prospects of success I like their naming 
I'm going to give them a 17. I think they have quite a high prospect of success. Uh, we've got to check out the roadmap. Roadmap. I don't think there's a roadmap. So there is a lot of actual VC data model, verifiable claims data model, 17 contributors, 400 commits, quite a lot actually. So Manu Sporny is one of the more active contributors. He seems to be the most, and then burn, burn. Next. Right. Okay. All right. It's good to see. Um, so uh, I don't know. It's reason. I don't know the time frame. But it looks to be a sixty-five, which makes it a B. Um. No, they don't have an MVP yet. <coughs> I think it's unknown at the moment. Actually, I don't have any information on it. I didn't see anything. Hype is high, and the ROI is high. I don't know the hard cap yet, and it's not released. White paper, I can do in Telegram, I can do. And they're really bad about links. to their GitHub. It's interesting that they would have the GitHub, but not have, but they, they wouldn't have the GitHub, but they have Telegram. Um, read the white paper. Let's take this and just do this while I have it open. Okay, B plus, unknown token metrics. I really need a, another number to come out of here to take into account the Hive token metrics and ROI. Uh, but really we're just looking at project quality. So liquidity network, Hype is, uh, do I have very high? Insane, uh, I'm gonna go insane with this one. When Vitalik tweets about you, it's pretty high. So I'm gonna go bad because they're doing a Dutch auction. Um, and ROI medium, because they're gonna be priced in as they should. That's sovereign identity. Oh, I never did Cognita. Who's Cognita? Oh, Windmill Enterprise. Right, enterprise data integrity. That was okay. It was a C plus. Enterprise data integrity. Liquidity network. Which network? Chain payments for everyone. Non custodial. So let's see. 
MVP, yes. Let's take a look at the, they have GitHub. Off-chain liquidity network. Off-chain, so it's an off-chain settlement network. And the DEX. Mm, with no information here. No commits. 40 commits. swaps off change payment channel networks such as lightning are broken how's this doing this should probably come back up to 647. That's where most of it's been done. Let's check in the premium group. Let's see if. The rotation has begun. Payment channel networks such as Lightning our collateral will be locked up for every channel. Uh, second, routing complexity is one of the biggest hurdles of current off-chain scaling solutions. Ethereum, mm -hmm. uh, optimistic on-chain transactions. Okay, Lightning is economically broken. Two-part channel hubs, Lightning right in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, burn down. Come on down. How's um, XRP USD doing? Yeah, that's good. That's what I like to see. It was an easy short at the top, wasn't it? Hmm. LTC has LTC USD on Bitfinex. Yeah. Oh my God, look at that. Could have gotten in at 97. I got, I'm in at like 93. So I've got another point to come down. I I did the bad thing and I, I went with the firing. So on the six hour BTC, BC USD, there was the six hour firing of. That short right here, that's red, by the way. So, right here went at like six five. Maybe it was up here. No, it's here. Yeah, so here it was sixty five seventy. Went more long here, um, and we'll see how it plays out. So on a on a six hour, you think that this bar would now go down more? They have another big down bar because we've gone down. We came down. We came up. We touched kind of touch this area and then that frees us to move down into this lower area and push the volume down. In-party payment hub. Uh -huh. Transaction volume over time period. Nice, okay. Current decentralized exchanges perform the swap execution on change, Ether Delta, Kyber. Is the blockchain transaction fees will increase? 
uh, these exchanges will no longer be able to operate due to excessive on-chain transaction fees. Instant atomic off-chain swaps without holding user funds and is resistant to ex excessive on-chain transaction fees. Uh, decentralized exchanges are exposed to the risk of blockchain congestion, popular allocation, such as CryptoKitties, right? Third, existing decentralized exchanges offer slow trading speeds because the users need to wait at least for one block confirmation as an exchange. It would be desirable to offer near instant trade execution for more trading flexibility. Okay. Universal hubs, so that is joining a hub can transact as funds with any other member of the hub instantly off chain. Uh, users, but accessible to thousands of others. Mm -hmm. So it's the Ethereum liquidity network. Interconnected hubs, hubs connected to hubs, connected to hubs. You can have off-chain payments if the hubs are connected. Not centralized. Who owns the funds? How redundant is the system? Can a central entity be censored? A user owns at any time its funds. No one can steal their funds. A hub is not a bank nor a custodian. Mm hmm. A hub can choose to forward payments, not to forward payments. The user simply removes his funds from a hub smart contract, which they can't prevent. Revive, rebalancing payment channels securely off chain applies to hubs. We presented the first solution that allows an arbitrary set of users in a payment channel network to securely rebalance their channels. Right. I'm going to pause for a minute or just turn off the mic.